Right, so we'll continue uh, to follow those arrests. Uh, the Hawks continue to make several unrests uh, relating to the July unrest. And of course, uh, the looting there cost our country billions and nearly 350 people lost their lives. Now, major social media companies, including Twitter, uh, reportedly helped the Hawks to track down the suspects, which of course raises some questions around privacy. Let's discuss. We're joined by Digital. Uh, digitally legal CEO, that's advocate Zaniwe Ntatisi uh, Asare. Advocate, thank you for being with us. A Hawks official reportedly told City Press that Twitter shared their personal details. Uh, so that would be linked to your account, including email addresses, cell phone numbers, and your date of birth. Firstly, does Twitter generally give out that sort of information or, or is this um, a groundbreaking in, in terms of them helping in this investigation? So thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, I think as a point of departure, um, we need to define those um, elements that you've just described. So for instance, email address, name, cell phone number as personal information. So that would fall under the Protection of Personal Information Act, Poppy in South Africa. And then there are also elements because there's um, you know, a digital platform that's involved. So that would also um, have the Cyber Crimes Act being uh, the, the act that applies in this particular regard. So to your question, is this something that is normal that happens every day? Absolutely not. Um, you know, platforms, social media platforms such as Twitter, especially at a global scale like that, really um, promote themselves as being platforms that protect people's information and ensure that um, when you use it, you are safe. But when they say this to you, that relationship is built on the fact that you are being a law-abiding citizen using their platforms, not in a manner that is promoting illicit behavior or inciting any type of violence. So really when they say we're protecting you, they're saying they're protecting the law abiding citizen. So presumably Twitter has or it has to make it very clear in which instances it will release information. Otherwise this could be a deterrent uh, to people who are concerned about privacy. So the terms and conditions of most, if not all, the um, the social media platforms specifically say that they will not promote any form of violence, any form of inciting of violence, and also hate speech or any behavior that's illicit, criminal, or untowards. Um, and that's why there's been a massive investment over the past five to ten years on um, community rules, how you use these social media platforms. So every time you see um, your social media platform saying they're up updating usage. They're updating them in accordance to what is acceptable, what is um, allowed within the law, and looking at even at a global scale GDPR and looking at um, different global conventions, crime will never be allowed. So in the moment, the moment that happens, all of these rules, um, exceptions start, start coming in. Yeah, and a lot of people like me don't read all the, the terms and conditions um, you have to accept, but, but you should, uh, presumably, especially if you want to do anything dodgy. Um, WhatsApp groups were where the real organization occurred. That, that is what's believed around the July unrest. But it doesn't sound like any WhatsApp uh, information has been handed over. Will, will that enforce the perception that WhatsApp is impermeable because of this end-to-end -end encryption that it uses? So, you know, when it comes to end-to-end -end encryption, you know, the, the, the essence of end-to-end of, of -end encryption is that messages being disseminated back and forth cannot be intercepted and that um, only messages that, you know, you're sending or the receiver, that's only where you can, the vulnerability is. Now, you know, WhatsApp says that they only keep messages for 30 days at a go. And if an investigation like this one takes, you know, months, if not a year plus um, to, to, be, to, to, to be dealt with, then how do you go back? So if they say that they cannot assist, then surely they cannot assist. However, um, what is happening now globally, there's been a trend where um, law enforcement agencies, countries themselves are saying, if you're going to operate in our country, you need to ensure that you are not um, aiding criminals to exacerbate situations. I mean, if we look back at the civil civil unrest in 2021 in South Africa, we, we social media, WhatsApp, all the voice messages, the voice notes, um, all the messages that even our parents, friends were sending, you know, um, all of that 
Act, all of that needs to be stopped. And that's why law um, law agencies are saying, you need to come, you need to help us um, in a similar way that Twitter did yeah. in, in South Africa. Yeah, apparently WhatsApp is facing a real pressure to share information. I mean, when it comes to child abuse or, or child pornography, those messages being shared, which makes sense. Uh, but then can they keep their uh, sort of selling point, which is absolute privacy and encryption if they do start sharing that information? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's a hard balance. Where do you think it'll it'll end? So, you know, when we have this conversation, we, it's almost like we have it within certain parameters as if platforms cannot change certain aspects about them. And the truth is they can, right? The same way that they created this platform with certain specifications means that if the laws within certain countries and there's, let's say, a global standard to what can and cannot be done and to what extent people can use social media platforms, um, especially when we're speaking about the most vulnerable uh, members of our global society, um, children, pornography, even, even if you think about what happened in South Africa, 50 billion worth of, of damage, you know, that, that, that can damage any, any country's GDP, any country's economy. We really need to start changing the rules. So lawmakers within countries need to be more um, forward. They need to be, uh, they need to put their, their voices louder and people need to start saying, look, in the same way that we have rules and regulations in the physical world, we need to start saying that the same needs to happen in the cyber world. And that can only happen with a with a shift of, of mindset. All right, thank you. Very interesting. And we'll continue uh, to follow the outcomes in court. Most of those suspects are now out on bail, but the Hawks saying they continue to make arrests uh, related to the July unrest last year. That was digitally legal CEO advocate Zaniwe and Tatisi Asare.